in this series we've described light as small packets of energy called photons that travel very fast. But that's not the entire story. Photons do not all have the same amount of energy. In fact, the sun emits a whole range of photons with differing amounts of energy. Some photons carry more or less energy than others. We call this range the electromagnetic spectrum. The electromagnetic spectrum ranges from low energy photons to high energy photons. Humans and other animals are able to see the visible light region of the spectrum. But even within the visible light region, the photons do not all have the same energy. It is the differences in the energy of photons in visible light that lets us see color. Let's look back to the 1600s and see how our understanding of color has developed. In a darkened room, Newton allowed a narrow beam of sunlight from a small slit in a window shutter to pass through a glass prism. On a board, he saw an oblong spectrum of colors, red, yellow, green, blue, and violet. Newton inferred that white light was a mixture of different types of rays. Each type refracted at slightly different angles which produced a different color. Newton then made a slit in the board so that one color only, for example red, could pass through. He passed the red light through a second prism. This time, only red light emerged from the prism and no spectrum was formed. This experiment demonstrated that a selected color could not be separated further by a second prism. We know that visible light is composed of photons of varying energies. When they meet a new material, such as a glass prism, their speed is changed, which has the effect of separating them. This separation of the photons is what we see as the colors of visible light. As Newton showed, when white light goes through a prism, it's refracted and dispersed into a colorful spectrum. Light behaves in a similar way when it passes through a raindrop. To see what's happening inside a raindrop, we've set up a round bowl of water as a giant raindrop. We added a little powdered milk so you can see the light beam, and we're using a slide projector for the sun. If we look at our giant raindrop, you can see the bright beam of light in the water. When this beam hits the back of the raindrop, some of the light is reflected towards the front of the drop. As the light leaves the raindrop, it's refracted. We've set up a plain card so we can see the light after it leaves the giant raindrop. Here you can see all the colors in the spectrum. Just like when light goes through a prism, the light will be dispersed by our giant raindrop so we can see the different colors. To make an entire rainbow, Light from the sun enters many different raindrops. This light is refracted as it enters the drops, then reflected off the back of the raindrops, then refracted again as it leaves the raindrops and becomes part of the rainbow that we see in the sky. How much of a U-turn each photon makes as it's refracted by the raindrop depends on the energy of the photon.